everyone welcome to the big data show and in today's video we are going to cover another important topic that is cache versus persist right so we will quickly go over the definition like what exactly this means right what's the difference the use case in the optimization and again it's a again important question that is asked during the interview uh, whenever an interviewer asks right what are the different spark optimization so this is again one of the uh, strategy that is often used for the spark optimization but again we will cover the scenario uh, when should we use this cache and persist right we will also study about the storage levels uh, like uh, do we have the options to configure that in memory or disk or both so we will also cover that right and then we will study uh, inside the storage level like what is the serialization and deserialization concept then we have some demo whatever we are going to understand we will also cover that in the spark ui and then we have some mcq questions so let's first understand right what exactly this means right so say you have written some spark code right and you have this uh, you are reading some csv file or this can be any operation right you can read it from parquet from some database connection so anything right and uh, we are creating some data frame on top of that and consider that as a base data frame and say it has some 10 columns or something right uh, post that right we are creating some another data frame on top of this df right and where you are again performing some transformation so consider this uh, transformation like the complex transformation uh, maybe you are creating some new columns based on some logic or you are doing some shuffle operations right some group by or something like that and you are now creating this data frame df1 right which is dependent upon the df and now uh, what we are doing right we are creating one uh, two more data frames df2 and df3 right so this two data frame again we are creating from this df1 now now what would happen so this df2 when we are going to uh, come here right so how spark works spark works on the lazy valuation model right and whenever it sees any action right it will try to create a job and then it will try to execute that right so that's how the spark works in the lazy valuation model so say you have this df and df1 right and say you are performing some action here you are again performing some action here and again you are performing some action here right so say now you want to compute the df1 so what would happen as soon as an action is encountered so this df uh, df1 uh, this DAG will create right and execution would happen all the complex transformations would take place and the data framework would be computed right so that is one story now what would happen if I want to create this df2 now so the, this df2 is dependent upon the df1 which is further dependent upon the df so this is how the flow is there that this is dependent upon the base task so ideally what should happen right because we already have this df1 computed right so ideally what should happen this df2 will uh, take the data it won't compute it from the scratch right it would simply go that this df1 is already computed apply the transformation and give the results this should happen right but what is happening uh, in spark right how it would happen so in order to compute the df2 right it is again dependent upon the df1 and which is further dependent upon the df so this will if i wanted to uh, so whenever an action is encountered here in the df2 it will create a job which will further compute the df1 again which will further compute the df so this uh, particular uh, transformations and action and this job will be uh, computed from the start so say if you are reading the csv file right from the beginning so csv file will be read again in order to compute the df2 right uh, so say now you want to compute the df3 right so same scenario will happen df3 as it is dependent upon the df1 and dependent upon the df it will again compute the df1 which will further read the data from the df and then it will uh, give me the output for the df3 so here you are happening we are not storing the intermediate data anywhere or the computation that is happening on the df1 side so anytime we are using that parent data frame again right it is computing it again from the basic from the start so that's uh, so say if you are having this transformation say which is taking say five minutes of time right so say this transformation is taking five minutes of time in that case in order to compute the df2 and df3 this will again take five five minute time in order to compute the df1 right which is again uh, not what we wanted in order to optimize our spark job right so what should happen right in order to optimize this type of scenario and why this is happening because spark works on the lazy valuation model and as soon as it encounters an action it creates a job 
right so in order optimize this job right if my different data frames that are uh, this again all depends upon how you are structured your job right so if there is a use case where uh, you have the different data frames that you are computing which is dependent upon your parent data frame right in that case it's not ideal that we are again computing it from the start so what should happen uh, there uh, we should store this type of intermediate uh, this type of results right to uh, to our memory or disk that depends we will study that in the storage level so the idea is we will store this to some intermediate storage and whenever any different child data frames which which is trying to depend upon this df1 right it would simply read the data from the memory right from the disk from the storage and won't compute it from the uh, again right so this is what is the concept of cache and persist right so cache and persist so say if i have this df1 right so if i say that df1 dot cache in my uh, in my spark code right what would happen right so this df2 if it going to if it won't compute right it would simply read the data from the memory it won't go and again compute from the start so this is the use case of the uh, cache and process and how it's useful so hope uh, that is clear right so let's quickly uh, see now the storage levels that we have in the PySpark. So we have in terms of the storage, right? So we do have, right, the memory and then we do have, say, disk, right? So we have different storage levels that we can configure on the uh, storage level, right, in the PySpark. So somehow, say, your data frame are not that huge, right? So say you are creating your Spark job, right? And the data frame that you wanted to cache to store the data is not that huge. And we know that it might fit into the memory. Then it would be an ideal choice that I will store that in the memory only, right? Uh, and in case I know that the data frame size is huge and it won't be able to store in memory, then it again depends and we can store that in disk. But somehow if I wanted to store some data set in memory and some data set in disk uh, that if the memory is not able to incorporate the same then it will uh, go to the disk. So in that case we can uh, have the memory and disk as a storage level. And again we can have this, uh, this is same as the memory and disk right but this is the deserialization. So what is serialization and deserialization, right? So whenever we are going to store any data frame, right? Or whenever we are creating anything, right? So the data that is there, it will be converted into the object byte, right? While in the transit or during the storage. So that will compress the data and the data site will be complex and less in size, right? So that is the concept of serialization to convert the object into the object bytes. To convert the data into the bytes object, right? And deserialization concept is the reverse of that. That while reading the data back from the storage, right, it will convert the data back from the byte object to the actual data set. That is the deserialization that will happen. So in case of all our memory only, disk only, and memory and disk and all other serialization, uh, all other storage level that happen in the PySpa, it's by default serialized, right? So in case uh, I don't want it that my data set gets deserialized, uh, get serialized, it's because um, there is a cost associated with that, right? So say if I, while storing, it's there in serialized and while reading back, it again needs to be deserialized, right? So while in terms of the storage, right, it is storage friendly because it is compressed and it takes less size. But in terms of uh, serializing and deserializing the data back, there is a uh, compute attached, right? So that depends again that uh, what you want, do you want it to be serialized and deserialized? That storage is more concerned to you or the computation is more concerned to you. And this is also the default level that is there in the persist right so if you don't specify any storage level this is the default that would happen in case of the pi spark and that's again in the latest version of spark that i'm talking about right and then the uh, next is the off heap right and for this to enable this off heap memory right we do have to enable the off heap memory by default we have this setting in a uh, disabled and if we wanted to store the data off heap we have to explicitly enable uh, spark to uh, store the uh, cache or process off heap right so that's about the storage levels that we have and now what's the difference in cache and process so we have all studied about what is process right and the storage level so cache is nothing but a shortened form or alias for the process so this is my persist right and this is the default uh, storage level that is there so cache if i'm just saying say cache 
so cache is equivalent to this persist with the default storage level so either i would do persist or i would do cache that's both the same thing uh, so hope that is clear what's the difference in cache and persist right so uh, if we quickly cover the definition right so what is uh, this cache and persist all about so it is to store the data frame data set or rdd in the memory or disk of your worker machine right so uh, this is again another interview question right so where exactly it will get stored so if i am doing cache will it get stored in the driver machine or stored in the worker machine it will store on the worker machine right and uh, it can be stored memory it can be stored disk or it can be stored in the both uh, depending upon the scenario and one more thing to cover in the storage level right so there are other uh, there are other levels as well that is re more related to the replication so in the same memory only right we do have uh, something like this that we can configure this is the replication number so by default it's one right and in case uh, you wanted to make your system more fault tolerant right and you wanted to have a replica of the cache that you are doing you can specify this replication factor and this automatically replicate your uh, storage data twice or thrice depending upon what you are setting uh, this is again depending upon uh, your complexity and the typicality of your project and you can accordingly set this configuration right so what are the use case of this cache and process right so as we discuss with this uh, scenario right that we discuss whenever there is use case of reusing the data right if i am some parent data frame and i'm using it again and again in my child data frame uh, this can be a good strategy to uh, store the data and then always try to uh, read it from the in memory instead of again computing from the scratch right so, uh, yeah and then we have this frequent subset access right so that's again one of the uh, another thing so say um, you are frequently using the same data again and again then it's again related to the reusing only that you want to reuse it and that same data set is reused uh, more than uh, twice thrice then again is a good use case for this uh, uh, cache and persist right and then when should we not use it right avoid when not accessing the data frequently so say we have a simple like this df and i am just simply doing it a df1 something like that right in that case if i have uh, and also one other thing to add here is that that to compute this df is not that computation expensive right this is a basic transformation that we can do and it can be simply computed then also in that case it won't make sense to use cache because also it will take a hit on your storage right so it's all again different consideration and uh, consideration that you should have before choosing like whether to go for cache and persist right and another important interview question that comes right is cache a transformation or an action right so what should happen what would happen so say if i have a simple spark code that i'm reading from the spark.read.csv file and i'm simply doing a cache right what would happen here will that cache will that cache your data or not no it won't cache so cache is a transformation and in order to actually cache your data frame in memory you should have an action attached right so if instead of this i am uh, doing this now df count, right that this is an action which will compute the cache uh, after that right so uh, please note that in case say you are doing a cache you are doing a transformation on your code and you are not performing an action right then this won't actually store on your storage level so this is one another thing that you should note that cache is a transformation or not an action so let's so that's all about the theory now and let's uh, jump to the demo part right mm -hmm.